and I know you and I have fought on oh, our fight. Well, well, that is fine. But that doesn't matter. But in the early days, I seen potential. You had the desire. You can't get that in school. You either have that or you don't, right? It is good to see people be successful. Heartbreaking tragedy of Tommy Beats. Hope keep watching for more details. Hi guys, what's up? My name is Lemon. Welcome back to my channel. Like this video and enjoy this video. Don't miss the main topic of this video. So let's start the latest update. Famous gold miner Tommy Beats, who has the lofty goal of finding 6,000 ounces of gold, finds himself on the verge of financial instability as Gold Rush Season 14 draws to a close. However, his plans took an unforeseen turn that is bringing him closer to bankruptcy. At the start of Season 14, Tony Beats sought to break his previous record of a 5,300 ounce gold hole valued at $9 million. Gaining access to his coveted claims on the Indian River fueled his optimism. But the absence of Kevin Beats early in the season forced Tony to make a drastic move, moving all operations to Paradise Hill. As of week 17, Tommy Beats has only managed to mine a meager 771.00 million. Given this poor performance, concerns about bankruptcy arise. Please read this article to learn more about the challenges faced by Tommy Beats this season. Hugely to tackle the issue to examine Tommy's operations, Mini Beats brings in an efficiency expert. The expert makes adjustments, such as maximizing rock truck routes for increased output. Tony Beats freely admits that the gold mining industry is a huge gamble, having made significant investments in machinery and equipment. Given his current low performance, there are concerns about the financial sustainability of his business, and if he can't turn things around and increase his gold output, he may go bankrupt. Despite prior difficulties with water licenses that both Tony and fellow miner Parker Schnabel had to deal with, Tony beats in season 14 when he managed to secure an important Indian River water license. This license is unique to the Klondex Indian River and is necessary for mining success. As the richest miner on the show, Tony beats strategically reinvests his profit into his mining company which involves significant expenditures on newer, more efficient equipment, often costing millions of dollars, with claims on Paradise Hill Scriver Creek and 163 claims in the Tamarack Slurmy Indian Rivers. Tony is still confident that these issues will resolve themselves, but time is running out and the need for a sizable gold yield becomes increasingly urgent. As season 14 goes on, Tony's significant financial worth is bolstered by his extensive property holdings and reality TV earnings. Tony Beats is at a crossroads in his gold mining venture, as obstacles from a failing gold haul and the possibility of insolvency cast doubt on his ambitions. Will Tony be able to turn the tide, hit his goals and secure the gold mining industry continues to demonstrate that success is never assured even for seasoned miners like Stomach Beats, whose astounding net worth of $15 million indicates that financial stability is still questionable. Tony outperforms the other cast members in terms of money, demonstrating his durability as a top gold prospector and his ability to run a family company at Paradise Hill, effectively managing the accounts of one of the most important miners in the Klondike is Tony's spouse, Minnie. Tommy Beat's financial strength and seasoned knowledge solidify his position as a dominant force in the lucrative and fiercely competitive field of gold mining. Tony and Minnie live in a newly built home at Paradise Hill. Greetings to all and welcome back to my Gold Rush channel. The vast expanse of the Klondike region was covered in shadows due to the sun's low position in the Alaskan sky. The promise of prosperity lingered like a siren and I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Call constantly while the miners were working and the air was still fresh. Tony triumphs against a Dutch-Canadian mogul renowned for his unwavering will and no-nonsense style. Among them, 
Chase of Gold stood out as a tall man with a thick white beard and a severe manner. He was well known for his resolve to chase gold without giving up over a number of years. The wind of fate can change, and even the most seasoned miners may encounter a storm they did not expect. Tony B and his crew faced a series of terrible events that seemed to be conspiring against them. Everything from the dredges to the wash plants experienced numerous mechanical breakdowns. Tommy Beats had established himself as a formidable opponent in the field of gold mining. His mining operations were renowned, and his dedication was unmatched within the industry. The previously trustworthy machinery was suddenly malfunctioning and making noise, necessitating constant maintenance and depleting the already tight budget. As the days turned into weeks, the situation's total gold production was alarmingly low. The meager amount of gold flakes that were recovered from the soul boxes was hardly enough to cover a pan's bottom. Tommy Beats, who was more well known for his ability to turn dirt into gold, found himself in a precarious financial situation. The gold veins that had once flowed liberally appeared to have dried up, putting the seasoned miner in danger of declaring bankruptcy due to these financial circumstances. The news of Tony Beats's financial troubles went quickly throughout the Klondurk, transforming the once bustling mining town into a whispered hub of whispers and speculation. Could it be that the renowned at the most crucial juncture of the issue, Tony defeats the person who had extracted gold valued at millions of dollars from Alaska's unfriendly soil, putting them in danger of filing for bankruptcy. Tony called an urgent meeting of his team, and those who had earlier been excited and determined looked worried. Tony was speaking to his squad, and there was a lot of pressure. He said, in a thick accent, there is no denying that we have reached a difficult period on this journey, but we are not the type of people to back down whatever it takes we are going to find that gold with all of our might in the past we have been confronted with difficulties, and we have always emerged. The crew nodded their heads in agreement triumphant, even though they were obviously worried. The impending threat of financial disaster cast a shadow over their collective spirit, but this seemed different from the storms they had endured together in the past. Anthony Beats, on the other hand, was not a man who could be easily defeated. He devised a bold plan, with a steely determination to turn the tide of the situation. It would require the team to work more diligently for longer periods of time, and with greater intelligence than ever before in order to rectify the situation. The mining machinery that had become a burden would need to be renovated and modernized. There was a high degree of risk involved, but in desperate measures when they struggled. The group began working, and as the days wore on, so did the nights. Tony Beats, the once strict taskmaster, was now working alongside his staff. His hands were collused and his brow furrowed with purpose. Drills, shovels, and the distant buzzing sound of dredges could be heard throughout the mining town. As the weeks passed, the mood gradually changed as the equipment was improved and began to yield results. The gold totals in the salvage boxes also showed signs of improvement, similar to how word of Tommy Beat's financial troubles had spread throughout the Klondike. The group carried on with their journey, driven by a recently found sense of purpose. The team, exhausted but hopeful, gathered around the shake boxes as the experienced miner carefully examined the gold flakes. The tension in the air was palpable, and as time passed, the news of his return spread like wildfire throughout the region. The whispers of uncertainty turned into silent appreciation, showing once again that the spirit of the gold rush was still alive and thriving. It was a brisk morning in the fall when the tipping point occurred. The gold totals were not only an advancement, rather, they were a revolutionary finding. Throughout the Klondike, the crew let out a yell that was audible to everyone else. Beyond the walls of the Klondike, word of Tony Beats' triumph was widely circulated. Tony Beats, the person who had been on the edge of complete financial ruin, had successfully produced a remarkable effective reversal. Both mining officials and investors were struck by the Dutch-Canadian miners' resilience in trying circumstances. 
Amidst the celebrations, the tale of the impoverished child who rose from the ashes and achieved prosperity once more enthralled many who were aware of the harsh reality of the gold rush. Tommy Beats took a moment to reflect on the journey he had taken. The gold rush was not only a celebration of the valuable medal, it was also an example of the human spirit's unwavering resilience, tenacity, and unwavering conviction that, no matter how bad the circumstances, there was always a gleam of gold waiting to be uncovered. That was what made this situation unique. Tony Beats was standing on top of the snow-covered ground in the Klondike as the winter snow began to cover the region. He was observing the mining environment, a story of triumph over hardship, was given by the earth which had been lifeless in the past, but was now covered with the wounds of their labor. A miner who fought the arms and went bankrupt would leave a legacy would reverberate across the Klondike for many decades. From now on, in spite of all the difficulties and ambiguities that it presented, the gold rush had once again demonstrated that fortune favored those who were courageous. A man named Tony Beats who had been staring into the abyss of financial devastation, emerged not only with gold in his hands, but also with a story of perseverance and redemption that would reverberate throughout the annals of mining history. An individual by the name of Tony Beats had demonstrated the fortitude of a guy who refused to be defeated, despite the fact that the Klondike was a punishing environment. Thanks for watching my video.